Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. Recently, I switched to Debian, and that includes my servers and workstations. Back when I switched to Debian, I promised I would show you guys my Debian desktop whenever I had that done, but I've been busy editing a lot of videos and managing the channel, so I haven't had a chance to show you that until today. So in today's video, I'm not only going to show off my Debian desktop, I'm going to show you how to set up and implement Sway, a tiling window manager, which is what I landed on when it comes to my graphical user environment. I'll give you some of my opinions about Sway in general, and then what I'll also do is give you the code for the config files that I've created as a part of this process, and if you want to, you can follow along with me and end up with your very own Sway configuration. If you check the description down below, I'll have a link to the blog post that matches this video, and there you'll be able to find the config files that I've created for this project. Now, if you haven't heard of Sway before, Sway is a tiling window manager, like I mentioned, and it's very popular within the Linux community. In fact, is tiling even inspired the tiling mode in Pop! OS? Sway itself is a drop-in replacement for i3, which is another popular tiling window manager, so you can effectively just switch over to Sway if you want to go ahead and do that, but Sway requires the Wayland Display Manager, so you have to have a system that supports that first, I just wanted to get that out of the way. And if you have an NVIDIA system, it's going to be a little harder, so I'm not going to cover that in this video. But what I will do, like I said, is go over my desktop setup and give you all of the configs and setup information that you might need if you want to set up Sway for yourself. Now before we get to that, I need to take a moment and mention the sponsor for today's video. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as Nextcloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate, and it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring this video. Now with all of that out of the way, let's dive into Sway, and I'll show you my desktop and show you how to set up your own. Let's get started. And here we go. Here's my custom Sway implementation built on top of Debian 12. What I'll do right now is go over my setup here. I'll give you a tour of my implementation. And some of the things that I'm going to go over are not specific to my setup here, but are just, well, things you get when you install Sway by default. Anyway, up here at the top, I have a little panel that shows me some useful information. Right here at the upper left corner of the screen, I have my fully qualified domain name, as you can see right here. And then here in the center, I have my workspaces. If I want to switch to a workspace that's open, I could simply click on it. Now notice that the other workspace went away, and the reason for that is because if you don't have anything running on a workspace, and then you switch to another one, then that one's going to go away since there's nothing there to hold it open. However, I could simply hold super and press any of the number keys right here to switch to that numbered workspace, and these workspaces are defined in the config file, which I will have in the official blog post for this video. But I really like the fact that only the workspaces that I'm using are open, so that way I'm not wasting any space. Right here I have a simple volume indicator, and this is powered by a bash script that I will also be providing. And then I also have right here a network connection identifier that says that I'm connected, and if I click on it, it gives me my IP address as well as the interface that I'm currently using for that connection. And then of course I have the current time, and if I hover over it, it gives me a symbol calendar. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I launch an application, and I'll just open a terminal right now, 
As you can see, it takes up the full screen. Well, since Sway is a tiling window manager, this is expected. If I was to launch another application, for example, another terminal, then you can see it splits the screen right down the middle. And if I open another one, it does the same thing. You get the idea. Now, just like with any tiling window manager, I can run anything I want in each of these quadrants here. And then I can rearrange them as well. So I could move my little H top window here from one quadrant to another. So that's pretty cool. And of course I can launch another application by holding super and pressing space. So maybe I'll just go through the list here and what should I run? Let's see. Well, let's run GNOME web. It might look a little bit weird in Sway because well, none of the applications here have a window border, but the GNOME applications will at least by default. But anyway, let's launch that. And I'm wasting a bit of space here, so I'll just close this here, and then I'll close this one. And there you go. I can also resize the individual applications, as you can see with my mouse. We could also do that with the keyboard shortcut by holding the Windows key or Super and pressing R. Then I can rearrange these right here by using the arrow keys on the keyboard. I also have a custom exit script that I came up with. It's very simple. If I hold shift and super and then press letter E on the keyboard, that's going to bring up the exit dialog there at the bottom. That's just confirming if I really want to log out and I don't want to because I'm recording. But if I did, I could click this button here or to cancel the process, I could click on this X and that'll cancel the process of logging out. So now what I'm going to do is show you how I set this up. Let's take a look. Now here what I have is the command that I use to install a number of packages to support my setup. I decided to go with the Alacrity terminal. And then we have light, which is going to help you modify the brightness of your display. For example, if you have a notebook. Of course we have Sway itself. That's what the entire video is about. We have Sway BG that allows us to set a wallpaper. Sway idle for idle sessions. We have a Sway image viewer here for safe measure. Sway lock, which is going to enable us to lock our screen, which we could do with super and escape. I have Waybar, Wofi, and then a set of fonts named Awesome. And that's going to facilitate the volume indicator. Without that package, you're going to see a strange character next to the volume, so that's why I have that. Now I'm not going to actually install any of these because, well, they're all already installed. These are the packages that I use to support my setup. But what you could do is pause the screen right here if you want to jot down these packages. Or you could simply go down to the description below where I'll have a link to the blog post for this video. Inside there, there's going to be all the commands and files and things you need to replicate my setup. Now, in order to configure Sway, at least when it comes to matching my setup here, the first thing that you're going to need is some directories to hold your configuration files. So what you'll do on your end is type mkdir and then dash p for parent directory, dot config slash sway, that's the first one. Next, you need a config directory for waybar, and then we need a config directory for wofi, which is what provides us with this nifty menu right here. That's what that is, that's what wofi is, and my configuration file for that will be stored there in that directory. Anyway, on my end, these directories already exist, so there's nothing that I need to do, but you'll need these three directories created at least. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do, is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Now when it comes to editing these config files, what you'll do is use your text editor of choice. Mine is Vim, but I'm just going to use Nano to keep it simple. And what we'll do is edit a file called config and that's going to be saved in the .config slash sway directory. And what you'll see as soon as I press enter is my config file. Again, this will be linked in the blog post so you could fetch this file if you want to copy what I have here. 
So what you'll do essentially is just paste the contents of the config file for Sway into your text editor window right here, and that'll give you a base configuration that you can, well, tweak to your satisfaction, or you can just simply leave it as is. So you'll grab that from the blog post and paste it in right here. Next, we have my audio script, which I will admit needs some refactoring. I just didn't get around to it yet. There's probably a lot that I could consolidate here. But anyway, this is what controls the volume indicator at the top right corner of the screen. So as you can see, I'm going to echo the appropriate volume icon along with the volume percentage, and that's basically all it's doing. What you want to do is copy that into this file right here. Again, the path is what you see right here. And then what you're going to do after that is change it to be executable. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So you run that command right there to mark it executable. Now the next file that you'll create on your end is this one right here, our exit script, which as you can see is very simple compared to the previous one, but all it is is a if statement. And as you can see, it's going to bring up a dialog box using sway nag. And then I have the individual parameters for that, as long as the verbiage that's going to be displayed on the screen when you go to exit. So that's how that works. And then you'll just basically grab this from the blog post. And of course, mark it executable, similar to how we did with the previous script. Next up, we have the screen locker. And I have some notes there at the top, as you can see. And that gives credit to where I found this particular script. But essentially, all this is doing is just, well, creating an idle session right here. And this is what controls the lock screen. So if you want to go ahead and configure the lock screen, you can add this right here to your configuration. And again, this is the lock underscore screen dot sh script inside the dot config slash sway directory inside your home directory. All you have to do is copy the contents into this file right here, and then of course, mark it executable. Now, another thing you'll want to copy over is the wallpaper file. And if I list the contents of my Sway directory underneath .config, you'll see that I have wallpaper.jpg listed in the output. That's my wallpaper file, basically this one right here. And you could go ahead and use mine if you want to download that from the blog post, or you could simply add your own. If you add a wallpaper that's a different file extension, of course, you'll have to change that in your config as well. It has to match, but that's why I have that right there. Next up, we have a config file for the way bar right here. And just like the other files, you could grab this from the config file. I'm not going to go over every single detail of these files because that would be like a two hour long video. And as you can see, I gave credit here to some individuals that posted some solutions that I used for various things. So kudos to these individuals for showing their configurations and inspiring my configuration. But anyway, we have our waybar config. We also have a style file right here. That sets the style, the look and feel, basically. Yet another thing you could grab from my blog post. And then the same is true with Wolfie, for example. We have a config file for that. This is probably one of the smallest config files here. And just like with the Waybar, we have a style file for this as well, as you can see right here. So essentially what you're going to do is just grab these config files and make sure that they're populated in the appropriate directories. After you do that, you should be able to log into Sway and use it from your distribution's login manager. You should see a Sway option there. If you don't, keep in mind, of course, that NVIDIA is not supported by default when it comes to Sway. There is a way to get it to work, but it's still not supported even if you do get it to work. But as long as you're not using NVIDIA, you should see a Sway option when it comes to the login screen and you should be able to choose that to log into Sway. Once you have it set up, you should be good to go. But before I close out the video, I just want to go over a few of the keyboard shortcuts so that way you know how to use it. With my config, if you hold super and press T, that opens up your terminal. I installed Alacrity, which is the terminal emulator that I decided to use with this configuration. 
If you want to use a different terminal emulator, make sure you install it first, and then second, update the configuration for launching the appropriate terminal emulator. And of course, if I hold super and press space, we have our launcher right here. And what I could do is open up an application, for example, a text editor. And then here I have my text editor, as you can see. Once your screen becomes a little busy, what you could do is select a window, and notice when I move my mouse around, I'm automatically selecting the window that's underneath the mouse cursor. You'll notice that whatever window I'm selecting is highlighted in green. But you can also use keyboard shortcuts for that and avoid the mouse altogether. So if I hold super and press left or right, you can see that the highlight changes. Now, if I want to enable stacking mode, this is pretty cool, check this out. I can hold super and press letter S. Now notice how all three of those windows were combined into a stack. Now you don't need to have each of these in a stack, for example. What you could do is hold shift and super and then use the left and right arrows to move an application out of the stack. And that's the same keyboard shortcut you would use to move a window around the screen, even if you don't have a stack. But if I move this particular terminal emulator here on the right over to the left, it's going to become part of the stack. Now, if I hold super and press up, I can go up in the stack or down to select each individual window. And this is something that I think makes tiling approachable even on smaller displays. Some people might think, well, I have a smaller display, why would I tile? I could only have probably two applications open anyway. Well, you could still take advantage of tiling because stacks give you a great deal of flexibility. When it comes to the workspaces here, I could simply hold super and press the number associated with the workspace that I want to switch to. For example, I'll switch to workspace number one, which is currently not open. But if I hold super and press number one, it'll create that workspace if it's not already open. I could also move an application from one workspace to another by holding super shift and then pressing the number that's associated with the workspace that I want to move it to. So if I want to move it to workspace four, for example, then right here, I've moved it to workspace four. We have only two applications open at this time. And if I switch to workspace four, here's the terminal window that I had on the previous workspace. If I hold super and press escape, it locks the screen. And when I start typing, and then that unlocks my session. I didn't bother customizing the lock screen at all, so I know that was very boring and a little ugly, actually, at least in my opinion. But then again, a lock screen doesn't have to be pretty, but I'm sure that's something you can customize if that's something that you wanna change. And if you do change it, then be sure to let me know in the comments down below what changes you've made, and you never know, you might even inspire my configuration. If I want to quit an application, and I'll open up another one just to kind of show you the difference here. If you hold shift and super and press letter Q, the application that you have highlighted will close. So if I press Q right now while holding those keys down, it goes away. We're now down to a single terminal window. And if I'm done with my session, again, I'll hold shift, super and press letter E. And then there at the bottom, my close dialog will show up and then I can click right here if I want to close the session. I'm not going to close it right now, you get the idea, but that was my Sway setup. It's really basic, but I figured it would be a great starting point for those of you out there that want to get started with Sway. Be sure to check out the blog post for this video because I'll also have a list of keyboard shortcuts there as well to get you started, and hopefully you'll enjoy Sway as much as I've been. And well, there's our video. I hope you enjoyed this video on Sway and my desktop setup in general. If you did enjoy this video, please click the like button to let YouTube know that you enjoyed my content. That might help Linux take over YouTube, which would be awesome. Or maybe not take over YouTube, but at least be more popular on YouTube. I think that would be awesome. Anyway, I have a ton of content coming very soon, so I'm going to get started on recording those videos for you guys. Make sure you subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.